Well, good afternoon, and thank you uh, to the organising committee for inviting me uh, to speak at, this, at today's conference. My name is Tom Wainwright. I'm a professor in orthopaedics at Bournemouth University in the United Kingdom, uh, and I'm a physiotherapist uh, by profession, and have been involved in enhanced recovery, both implementation uh, and research, for over 15 years. Today, I've been asked to talk to you about considerations and adaptations of enhanced recovery principles in geriatric fractures. I plan to cover briefly the underlying principles of enhanced recovery, or fast track or rapid recovery, talk about why I believe that enhanced recovery is for all surgical patients, and then talk specifically about best practice principles around fractured neck of femur management. So to start, I'm going to return to the underlying principles of enhanced recovery. Professor Henrik Kellett was a general surgeon from Denmark, who in the late 1990s and early 2000s started to think differently about how he treated his surgical patients. He questioned the assumptions and the traditions and turned the current care at that time on its head. This was all with the underlying principle of modulating the surgical stress response. The aim of a multimodal approach was to minimise the infarct from surgery so that patients could recover quicker. And this was based around some key concepts of a multimodal and opioid sparing analgesic and anaesthetic technique, minimally invasive surgical techniques, early mobilisation uh, and early feeding post-surgery. His improvement efforts at that time uh, in order to improve the perioperative outcome were based around three questions. And these three questions are still relevant today as we pursue a pain and risk-free operative procedure. He asked, can every operation be ambulatory? Why is the patient in hospital today? And what is it that we cannot control? So as we fast forward, in the UK at least, enhanced recovery has been recommended by our, our NICE committee for all surgical patients. Now NICE stands for the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence and they're a body that looks at all of the evidence from both a clinical and economic standpoint to rec make recommendations for the treatment of patients within the NHS. They recommend that for all elective major and complex surgery enhanced recovery is used. And they go forward to say that actually, although there is limited evidence of effectiveness for enhanced recovery in trauma and emergency surgery, they still recommend its use and they call for future, res future research uh, to be undertaken. If we look forward to this concept of providing enhanced recovery for all surgical patients and not just elective patients and in the case of orthopaedics, hip and knee replacement where most of the research to date has been undertaken, you can see that the IRAS Society, which is an international society with a non-profit aim of improving surgical outcomes across the globe, have produced a wide variety of guidelines across a range of surgical procedures from colorectal and general procedures to cardiac to orthopaedic procedures such as hip and knee replacement and also um, lumbar spine surgery. But into 2021, where they have produced the first emergency surgery guidelines for laparotomy. What's clear across all these guidelines is even in complex surgical patients, there are proven benefits um, of enhanced recovery. We can see that in our setup in Bournemouth, we reduce length of stay quite significantly um, by, over, um, by a, a large amount for our older patients having hip replacement. We introduced enhanced recovery and our patients stayed five days compared to a national average of nine days at that time. But more importantly, we reduced the number of percentage of readmissions and also mortality and also increase the number of discharges of patients going to their home address. All important outcomes that are key drivers for improving care in fractured neck of femur. So, if we look at fractured neck of femur, there is a huge opportunity for improvement. This paper that I published back in 2016, the data may have changed slightly, but the argument remains the same if we look at the current day in the United Kingdom.
In this paper, we reported that there are around 67,000 hip fractures uh, in England, Wales and Northern Ireland per year. And that figure has grown slightly as the demographics have changed. This hospital cost is massive. Annual hospital costs for fracture are around 1.1 billion. And amazingly, fractured neck of femur patients are reported to occupy 20 to 25% of all acute hospital bed days, beds, beds, and make up half of all hospital days for all fractures. We can see here that there is a significant long length of stay associated with these patients. And actually, very few patients are discharged to their normal place of residence, and there's a high readmission rate. And we'll all be aware of the relative risk of mortality uh, in the 12 months following hip fracture. So if we look at this paper in more depth, what was clear is there was a wide variation in outcome in terms of length of stay. There was a difference of length of stay um, of around 10 day, from 10 days all the way to nearly 30 days. So a 20-day difference in the way patients and how long patients stayed in hospital. And if we look at this lower graph, this looks at the case mix adjusted difference. And this shows that what we observe in patients is that these patients were staying longer in hospital across these different trusts, not because the patients were more acutely ill or um, were, have more comorbidities in one trust compared to another, but because the processes and pathways were different. The case mix adjusted data showed that patients um, with the same um, comorbidities and the same presentation were being treated differently in different hospitals. So back at this time, we undertook improvement work around enhanced recovery and improving the outcomes for our fractured neck of femur patients at my local hospital in Poole. What we can see here is by implementing some simple components um, that are consistent with enhanced recovery principles that we went from 20 days down to a regularly consistent 10 day length of stay with an increased number of patients being discharged home within our hospital. And if I take you back to the last slide, that can show you that at that point we were the exemplars within the country. When we interviewed staff as part of this project, we found that the key parameters were for success were compliance to the National Hip Fracture Database guidelines, a collaborative practice across all teams, again consistent with enhanced recovery principles, orthogeriatrician input, that's crucial. Um, patients are admitted under dual um, responsibility and care by both the orthopaedic surgeons and the orthogeriatricians. Changing the preoperative mindset, whereby patients, instead of having to be proven they were fit for surgery, are, were assessed for fit for surgery and less proven otherwise. And of course, those key elements of enhanced recovery, early multimodal opioid sparing analgesia and anaesthetic, early mobilisation and rehabilitation, and discharge planning at an early stage. And this work at Poole really showed that we could control a number of elements around hip fracture care. And if we go back to the questions I took from Prof Kellett at the start of this presentation, what is it that we cannot control? I can show you from the example there that we could control a lot of elements and that resulted in a 10 day length of stay change for our patients. And this is important because it's often the process, system and logistical changes that can make such a big difference with enhanced recovery. And I think this will be especially so in trauma and emergency pathways. Because we need to remember that the aim of enhanced recovery and the aim of our practice is good patient care. So we need to make the right clinical decisions. So that's the right evidence-based medicine, the right decisions about specific components of a pathway, the right surgical technique, the right type of anaesthetic or analgesia. But that alone will not make the difference. Where that needs to be sorted with process and system changes so that we can do the right things in the right way to equal good patient care. And for hip fracture, this is incredibly important because as we'll see in my slides in a moment, it's important for one element that we operate on patients within the first 24 hours. And that's a process and system change that need to facilitate that good clinical decision. So if we go to some more detail about enhanced recovery and fractured nick of femur here, I think Henrik Kellett looks at these patients in an interesting way. He views a hip fracture patient as a medical patient with a hip fracture. 
And this viewpoint is based on some work that he did um, back in the early 2000s, where him and a colleague looked at mortality analysis in hip fracture patients, pointing to the implications for further improvement of perioperative care. In a very detailed manner, they analysed 47 perioperative deaths across a large cohort of fractured neck of femur patients. 12 deaths, 25% were unpreventable. 21 deaths were prevent potentially preventable. But 14 deaths were possibly preventable, showing that there's a big scope to change the medical decisions, the medical care that we provide for patients that could improve quality and reduce mortality significantly uh, for these patients. And since that publication, the application of enhanced recovery has been trialled and has been published in um, hip fracture. And a recent systematic review and meta-analysis um, conducted um, and published in perioperative medicine found that enhanced recovery reduced time to surgery, length of stay and complication rate without increasing readmission rate or mortality rates for fractured neck of femur patients. Now within this um, meta-analysis, as you can see here, one, two, three, there were only six or seven studies uh, that met the criteria. And the details at both the pre-operative, intraoperative, and post-operative here are provided for each paper, which I'd encourage you to, to review. There are core components analogous with enhanced recovery across all of those, and I'll summarise those now. So the components around enhanced recovery for hip fracture patients are similar to those that we see in hip and knee replacement, but also across more complex surgical procedures in the other specialties. Early surgery within 24 hours is key. Multimodal, non-opioid analgesia. Now whatever cocktail and regime your hospital chooses, uh, that is okay. We, haven't, we don't know one recipe is better than the other at the moment. What's probably most important is that you have a standardised approach that is delivered to every patient, every time. Early oral nutrition, post-operatively, a standardised fluid therapy regime, clear trigger points according to local policy for blood transfusion, oxygen therapy, immediate mobilisation and physiotherapy, and early planning of discharge. And if we expand these enhanced recovery concepts to look at the NICE guidelines for hip fracture care, the, these fit in nicely with the key priorities that NICE has found and recommended. Timing of surgery, dedicated and planned surgical team with dedicated trauma lists, using the right surgical procedure for the type of fracture and type of patient, early mobilisation and key multidisciplinary management, which we'll talk about in more detail in a moment. So timing of surgery and planning the theatre team, this is extremely important. Perform surgery on the day of or within 24 hours of mission. This is a clear component that has to be part of any enhanced recovery pathway looking at hip fracture. Identify and treat correctable comorbidities immediately so that surgery is not delayed. And more detail is provided within the NICE guidelines of how and what conditions this may include. And schedule hip fracture surgery on a planned trauma list with dedicated trauma surgeons. In terms of surgical procedures, I'm a physiotherapist, I'm not a surgeon. The NICE guidelines state clear, um, clearly that in fit active patients, a, you should perform a hip replacement in patients with displaced intracapsular fractures. You should offer hip replacements to patients with displaced intracapsular fracture who meet defined criteria. And you should use extra medullary implants in preference to an intramedullary nail in patients with trochanteric fractures above and including the lesser trochanter. Now that's not to say that expert surgeons won't get excellent results if they operate outside of those criteria. But when we think about all trauma surgeons, all abilities and all experiences, this is the guidance um, from NICE which is a good starting point for your hospital policy. Mobilisation strategies. It goes without saying, early physiotherapy is extremely important. And unless medically or surgically contraindicated, it should start either the day of or the next day following surgery. Physiotherapy should be at least daily with these patients, and if preferable, twice daily, so that discharge criteria and a facilitation to going home can be achieved. Multidisciplinary management. Now this is the underpinning concept of all enhanced recovery protocols and why I believe uh, one of the factors they are so successful. 
Orthogeriatric assessment pre-surgery and within the first 24 hours is essential for enhanced recovery in fractured neck ophema patients. Rapid optimization of fitness for surgery. Early identification of individual goals for both rehab and discharge are important. A continued coordinated orthogery and multidisciplinary review is also important post-surgery. Once the surgical procedure has been undertaken, the orthogeriatricians on a sliding scale will take more responsibility for the patients and their rehabilitation. Liaison with integration of related services such as social services post-discharge are also important. And a clinical and service governments with responsibility for all stages of the pathway of care, both in hospital and post-discharge, is also important. And this multidisciplinary management is extremely important if we think about early supported discharge. Now, for many patients, they will meet discharge criteria and be able to go home. There are a number of patients, however, that may take longer to reach those um, discharge criteria for hospital. So you should consider, consider setting up an early supported discharge scheme. And guidance is provided within the NICE guidance of how to do this. And this is for patients who are medically stable, have the mental ability to participate in rehab, and are able to transfer and mobilise short distances, but have yet to receive their full rehabilitation potential. It's important that we discharge these patients home because they're much more likely to rehab um, quicker at home rather than becoming medicalised and staying in hospital. But of course, there needs to be a service that supports this um, once they go home. And more details are provided within the NICE guidance. And I think this last slide from Henrik Kellett sort of proposes how this multidisciplinary disciplinary care looks for hip fracture patients. Obviously, on their admission, the anaesthetics, geri geriatrician and orthopaedic surgeons have the biggest role to play. But then as, as time goes on, once that patient has recovered from their initial surgery, they become more under the management of the geriatricians, the nurses and the physiotherapists so that they can liaise and, and make sure that patient and meets their discharge criteria and can go safely home. So thank you for your attention. I hope I've given you um, a brief overview of the underlying principles of enhanced recovery and why they relate to fractured neck ophema. I hope I've started to make the argument that enhanced recovery should be for all surgical patients, both elective and non-elective um, surgical patients and also made the case for why enhanced recovery um, should be your pathway option of choice for fractured neck ophema patients. And in my experience in our hospital, we reduce length of stay by 10 days by employing the principles of enhanced recovery. So there is a potential massive, massive win for both your patients uh, and your hospital systems. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, please do get in contact with me.